Hi and welcome to munshigiri.com. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the amendments in negative list of service tax applicable for November or December 2016 examinations. This video does not cover the complete negative list services, rather just the amendments that are there in the negative list applicable for your November or December 2016 examinations. In this amendment tutorial, we will be covering all the exemptions as well as abatements related to the negative list entries. Now first of all, apart from the negative list, the rate of service tax applicable for your examinations is 14%. The education cess of 2% as well as secondary higher education cess of 1% has been omitted. However, Swachh Bharat says of 0.5% has been implemented. So from your examination point of view, the effective rate of service tax is 14.5%. Now moving to the amendments in the negative list. First entry, first section that you have in the negative list is section 66D entry number A. This section talks about the services provided by government or the local authority. That is, whatever services are provided by the government or local authority are in the negative list. Except the following services. That is, the services that we are going to cover now are the taxable services. First is, services provided by department of post by way of four things. One is a speed post, second express parcel post, third life insurance and fourth is agency services provided to person other than government. Second services in relation to a vessel or an aircraft inside or outside the precincts of a port or an airport. Third is transport of goods or passengers. Now in these three entries, there is no amendment. However, the amendment is there in the fourth entry. The fourth entry was support services other than those covered in 1, 2, 3. Now support services has been amended or substituted with the word any services. So the first amendment that you have is in case of support services other than those covered in one first to third clauses. Okay. Now this support services, this word has been substituted by any service. Now what is the effect of this amendment? The effect is all the services provided by government or local authority to a business entity has been removed from the negative list. So all the services are liable to service tax. Also now exemptions, new exemptions have been inserted with respect to this entry. These exemptions are as follows. There are a total of 10 new exemptions that have been introduced in this particular entry. Now we'll look at these exemptions one by one and these have been inserted with the fact from April 2016. So very much relevant and very much important from your examinations point of view. The first exemption is not changed. Okay, the first one was services by government or a local authority or a governmental authority by way of any activity in relation to any function entrusted to a municipality under article 243 w of the constitution now this is not newly inserted this is intact as it was earlier the rest of the entries that we are going to cover now, these are the newly inserted exemptions with the fact from April 2016. Let's look at the first exemption that we have. Okay. Exemptions. Looking at the first one. 
the first is services provided by government or local authority to a business entity is exempt if its turnover in the preceding financial year does not exceed rupees 10 lakhs this has been inserted by notification with effect from 1st april 2016 so this is services provided by government or local authority to a business entity exempt if its turnover in the preceding financial year does not exceed rupees 10 lakhs that was the first newly inserted exemption second is services provided by government or a local authority to another government or a local authority this is also exempt so this is with effect from 13th of april 2016 the above one was with effect from 1st april 2016 and this is with effect from 13th april 2016 this is services provided by government or a local authority to another government or a local authority these services are also exempt services now this exemption shall not apply to any services specified in section 66 da1 2 and 3 that is the first one is services provided by department of post second services in relation to vessel and aircraft and third is transport of goods and passengers it does not extend to those services coming to the third one third exemption that we have is now all these exemptions are with effect from 13th april 2016 onwards third one is services provided to individuals what is covered in this exemption is the services provided by government or a local authority by way of issuance of passport visa driving license birth certificate or death certificate all these services provided by government or the local authority are the exempt services moving on to the next one next exemption is services where gross amount charged does not exceed rupees 5000 services where gross amount charged does not exceed rupees 5000 now services provided by government or a local authority where the gross amount charged for such service does not exceed rupees 5000 is also exempt now this does not apply to services specified in section 66d entry number a and sub entry 1 2 and 3 the same that we covered for this one services provided to individuals now in case where continuous supply of service is provided by the government or a local authority the exemption shall apply 
only where the gross amount charged for such service does not exceed rupees 5000 in a financial year that was the fourth exemption coming to the fifth, fifth exemption that you have is services by way of toll rating non performance of a contract this has also been made exempt services by way of toll rating non performance of a contract now what is covered here is the services provided by government or a local authority by way of tolerating non performance of a contract for which consideration in the form of fines or liquidated damages is payable to the government or the local authority under such contract so in that in that case it is a exempt service that was the fifth exemption coming to the next exemption we have is service by way of registration etc this is also exempt service by way of registration etc so let's see what is covered here services provided by government or a local authority by way of two things one registration required under any law for the time being in force and b testing calibration safety check or certification relating to protection or safety of workers consumers or public at large required under any law for the time being in force so there are two things covered under it a is registration required registration required under any law for the time being in force and b part of this is what is covered in this is testing calibration safety check or certification relating to protection or safety of workers consumers or public at large required under any law for the time being in force coming to the seventh exemption that we have is service by way of assignment of right to use natural resources to an individual farmer for the purpose of agriculture now this is supposed to be exempt service by way of assignment of right to use natural resources to an individual farmer for the purpose of agriculture Now this is also an exempt service that is service provided by the government or local authority by way of assignment of right to use natural resources 
to an individual farmer for the purposes of agriculture next is eighth number eighth exemption service by way of activity in relation to any function entrusted to a panchayat under article 243g of the constitution by way of activity in relation to any function entrusted to a panchayat under article 243g of the constitution what is exempt here is service provided by government or local authority or a governmental authority by way of any activity in relation to any function entrusted to a panchayat under this article of the constitution another one eighth exemption service by way of assignment of right to use any natural resource prior to 14/2016 service by way of assignment of right to use any natural resource prior to 14/2016 services provided by government or local authority by way of assignment of right to use any natural resource where such right to use was assigned by the government or the local authority before 14/2016 however the exemption shall apply only to service tax payable on one time charge payable in full upfront or in installments for assignment of right to use such natural resources that was your ninth exemption coming to the 10th and the newly inserted exemption is services to telecom service provider license fee or spectrum user charges for financial year 2015-16 is exempt to telecom service provider license fee or spectrum user charges for financial year 2015-16 is exam. Now, services provided by government or local authority by way of allowing a business entity to operate as a telecom service provider or use radio frequency spectrum during the financial year 2015-16 on payment of license fee or spectrum user charges, as the case may be, is an exempt service. now there were not 10 there are actually 11 services that are exam the 11th one is merchant overtime charges this is merchant overtime charges the services provided by government by way of deputing officers after office hours or on holidays for inspection or container stuffing or such other duties 
in relation to import export cargo on payment of merchant overtime charges is an exempt service now coming to the next entry that is section 66 d entry number b services provided by reserve bank of india there is no change in this entry there is no amendment next is section 66 d entry number c services by foreign diplomatic mission again no amendment coming to the next one section 66 d entry number d this is related to services relating to agriculture or agricultural produce now a new exemption has been inserted with effect from 1st april 2016 the new exemption is services provided by nccd by way of cold chain knowledge dissemination is exempt so this is new exemption services provided by nccd by way of cold chain knowledge dissemination is exempt so services provided by nccd's national center for cold chain development under the ministry of agriculture cooperation and farmers welfare by way of cold chain knowledge dissemination are exempt so that was the only exemption inserted in this section the next section is section 66d entry number e trading of goods no amendment next is section 66d entry number f this is related to the job work process now this amendment in this entry services by way of carrying out any process amounting to manufacture or production of goods excluding alcoholic liquor for human consumption is covered in the negative list so there is this amendment on this excluding part services by way of carrying out any process amounting to manufacture or production of goods excluding alcoholic liquor for human consumption now this is in the negative list earlier this alcoholic liquor for human consumption was in the negative list now with effect from 14 2016 this has been excluded from the negative list so that means now there is service tax on alcoholic liquor for human consumption now let's highlight this portion a little more any process amounting to manufacture or production of goods what does it mean so this is process amounting to manufacture or production of goods this is defined under section 65b 40 it means three things one process 
on which duties of excise are levable are levable under section 3 of central excise act 1944 the second thing that is covered under this is a process on which duties of excise are levable under medicinal and toilet preparations act medicinal and toilet preparations excise duties act 1955 this or this or the third one that is any process amounting to manufacture of alcoholic liquor for human consumption for human consumption opium indian hemp and other narcotic drugs and narcotics on which duties of excise are levable under any state act for the time being in force now this was the situation prior to the amendment now the amendment that is there in this is this alcoholic liquor for human consumption has been omitted from here now this is omitted the effect of this amendment is that any service by way of carrying out any processes for production or manufacture of alcoholic liquor for human consumption has been excluded from the negative list it means that now service tax shall be levied on contract manufacturing or job work for production of potable liquor for a consideration now next entry that we have is section 66 d entry number g sale of space or time slots for advertisement now there is no amendment in this entry next is section 66 d entry number h service by way of access to a road or a bridge on payment of toll charges again no amendment next entry that we have is section 66 d entry number i it is related to betting gambling or lottery now there is amendment in this section betting gambling or lottery are covered in the negative list now in this entry explanation 2 to section 65b 44 has been inserted so what has been inserted explanation 2 to section 65b 44 has been inserted now betting gambling or lottery is covered in negative list but services of lottery distributors and agents is not covered in the negative list so these services are liable to service tax as per explanation 2 to section 65b44 it is clarified that expression transaction in money 
or actionable claim shall not include the activity carried out by lottery distributor or selling agent second in relation to promotion marketing organizing selling of lottery or third facilitating in organizing lottery of any kind in any other manner so this explanation has been inserted as per section 65b 44 so it says transaction in money or actionable claim shall not include the activity carried out number 1 by a lottery distributor or selling agent in relation to promotion marketing organizing selling of lottery or facilitating facilitating in organizing lottery of any kind in any other manner So these services shall be liable to service tax. Now what is a transaction in money or actionable claim? Now let's understand transaction in money with the help of an example. Suppose a foreign exchange dealer while exchanging one currency for another also charges a commission. This is not a transaction in money since the foreign exchange dealer has charged the commission. Now if the foreign exchange dealer does not charge any commission and the exchange and exchanges the currency per se that is without charging any extra commission it would be called a transaction in money. Transaction only in money is not chargeable to service tax. So when it is said that Transaction in money does not include activity carried out by lottery distributor or selling agent in relation to the activities provided like promotion, marketing, organizing, selling etc. So all these services shall be liable to service tax and 100% reverse charge is applicable on such services. Now there is a composition scheme for distributor or selling agent engaged in promoting marketing etc of lottery. They will have the option to pay service tax including the Swachh Bharat says as follows like instead of paying service tax at the normal rate. Now there is an amendment in these rates too. So you have two cases here. Case one is if Lottery scheme is one in which guaranteed payout is more than 80%. More than 80%. So we are taking two situations here. One was the situation that was prior to amendment and 
after the amendment service tax prior to amendment and here you have the service tax after amendment prior to amendment it was rupees 7000 on every rupees 10 lakh or part of 10 lakh of aggregate face value of lottery tickets printed by organizing state for the draw the 7000 on every rupees 10 lakh this is of aggregate face value of lottery tickets printed by organizing state for the draw now after the amendment this 7000 amount has been increased to rupees 8200 now it is 82000 on every rupees 10 lakh or part of rupees 10 lakh of aggregate face value of lottery tickets printed by the organizing state for a draw that was when the guaranteed payout is more than 80% second is if in the lottery scheme the guaranteed payout is less than 80% if lottery scheme is one where guaranteed payout is less than 80% in that case prior to amendment the amount was rupees 11000 on every rupees 10 lakh or part of rupees 10 lakh of aggregate face value of lottery tickets printed by organizing state for the draw now this limit of 11000 has been increased to rupees 18000 12800 so now it is service tax after amendment is rupees 12800 on every rupees 10 lakhs or part thereof of aggregate face value of lottery tickets printed by organizing state for the draw so this was the amendment here okay so the person paying the service tax under this scheme shall have the option to pay swachh bharat says as determined by the following formula so what is the formula for calculating the swachh bharat says it is service tax liability as calculated above divided by 14% into 0.5% that is the swachh bharat cess so that is how you can calculate the swachh bharat cess amount next is valuation in case of services provided by lottery distributors and agents now let's look uh, take up an example for this the lottery ticket was of face value of rupees 100 which is received by the distributor at rupees 90 then rupees 10 shall be deemed to be the consideration for the service the option of opting under composition scheme to be exercised within a period of 1 month of the beginning of each financial year and such option shall not be withdrawn during the remaining part of the financial year and in case of new service provider the option shall be exercised within one month of providing of such service that was about section 66d entry number i 
नेक्स्ट इज सेक्शन सिक्सटी सिक्स डी एंट्री नंबर जे दिस इज एडमिशन टू एंटरटेनमेंट इवेंट्स और एक्सेस टू एम्यूजमेंट फैसिलिटीज नाउ एडमिशन टू एंटरटेनमेंट इवेंट्स और एक्सेस टू एम्यूजमेंट फैसिलिटीज हैज बीन ऑमिटेड फ्रॉम द नेगेटिव लिस्ट सो दिस इज एडमिशन टू एंटरटेनमेंट इवेंट्स or access to amusement facilities this has been omitted from negative list however certain exemptions have been provided with effect from 16 2015 Now let's look at the various exemptions that have been provided. First is service by way of right to admission to number one, exhibition of cinematographic film, circus, dance, or theatrical performance, including drama or ballet. Second, recognized sporting event, and third, award function, concert, pageant. musical performance or any sporting event other than a recognized sporting event where the consideration for admission is not more than rupees 500 per person so first of all let's just write it down and then i'll explain you the effect of this amendment assumption service by way of right to admission to a exhibition of cinematographic film circus dance or theatrical performance including drama or ballet b is recognized sporting event and c is award function concert patient musical performance or any sporting event other than a recognized sporting event other than a recognized sporting event where the consideration for admission is not more than rupees 500 per person now what is the effect of this amendment the implication of these changes are as follows number 1 service tax shall be levied on the service provided by way of access to amusement facility providing fun or recreation by means of rides gaming devices or bowling alleys in amusement parks amusement arcades water parks or theme parks second 
service tax to be levied on service by way of admission to entertainment event or concerts pageants musical performances concerts award functions and sporting events other than recognized sporting event if the amount charged is more than rupees 500 for right to admission to such an event and third however service by way of admission to entertainment event namely exhibition of cinematographic film circus recognized sporting event dance theatrical performance inclu- including drama and ballet shall be continued through the route of exemption that was about this section next is section 66d entry number k this is transmission or distribution of electricity by an electricity transmission or distribution utility no amendment next is section 66d entry number l it is about the educational services <clears throat> now the following services have been adam- exempted apart from those that were exempted earlier so there are some exemptions in this entry section 66d entry number l this is educational services the newly inserted exemptions are as follows number 1 service provided by iim to the students by way of following educational programs except edu- uh, executive development program three things under this let's look at this one services provided by iim indian institute of management to the students by way of following educational programs except executive development program so this program is liable to service tax now three things first is two year full time residential post graduate programs in management for the post graduate diploma in management post graduate diploma in management to which admissions are made on the basis of cat so this is exempt admissions are made on the basis of cat second under this is under the exempt services fellow program in management and third is five year integrated program in management integrated program in management so all this is exempt except the executive development program by the iim now second exemption that you have is services of assessing bodies services of assessing bodies services of assessing bodies and paneled centrally by directorate general of training ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship by way of assessments under skill development initiative scheme are exempt 
so that was about the services of assessing bodies and third is services provided by training providers under deen dayal upadhyay gramin kaushalya yojana this is also exempt services provided by training providers under दीन दयाल उपाध्याय ग्रामीण कौशल्य योजना दी सर्विसेज आर ऑल्सो एग्जाम नाउ सर्विसेज प्रोवाइडेड बाय ट्रेनिंग प्रोवाइडर्स प्रोजेक्ट इंप्लीमेंटेशन एजेंसी under deen dayal upadhyay gramin kaushal yojana under the ministry of rural development by way of offering skill or vocational training courses certified by national council for vocational training are exam now these are the newly inserted exemptions rest is same that was about section 66d entry number l moving on to the next entry section 66d entry number m that is renting of residential dwelling for users residents no amendment another entry next is section 66d entry number n that is financial services now there are amendments in financial services let's see this section 66d entry number n this entry talks about financial services that is services by way of extending deposits loans or advances in so far as the consideration is represented by way of interest or discount now there are two amendments in financial services one an abatement for services provided in relation to chit fund is 30% that is 30% abatement has been provided first you have is abatement for services provided in relation to chit fund is 30% it says that abatement in respect of services provided by a foreman of chit fund in relation to chit is 30% it means that the value of taxable services in this case shall only be 70% however this is subject to fulfillment of certain conditions now what are the conditions the exemption in form of abatement shall apply where sanvet credit on inputs capital goods and input services used for providing the taxable service has not been taken under the provisions of sanvet credit rules 2004 a clarification has been added in regard to levy of service tax on taxable services provided now what is that clarification let's look at this this is newly inserted okay according to this clarification what is this clarification about levy of service tax on taxable services provided on taxable services provided number 1 by members of joint venture to the joint venture and vice versa and second is between members of joint venture and third is taxation of cash calls or
और कैपिटल कंट्रीब्यूशन मेड बाय मेंबर्स टू दी जेवी and also administrative services provided by a member to the jv in the first two cases that is levy of service tax on taxable services provided by members of joint venture to the joint venture and vice versa and between members of joint venture taxable services provided for consideration by joint venture to its members or vice versa and between members of joint venture are taxable as the joint venture and the members of joint venture are treated as distinct persons so this is taxable cash goals or capital contribution made by the members to the joint venture if cash goals are merely transaction in money then it is not taxable and if consideration is involved for taxable service then it is taxable so there are two things under this if it is transaction in money then this is not taxable and if consideration is involved that is it is not just transaction in money then it is taxable that was about the financial services another entry that we have is section 66d entry number o it talks about transportation of passengers now in this entry also there are two amendments one is in respect of exemption and second is in respect of abatement so let's look at the first one in respect of the exemption now the following exemptions have been provided in respect of transportation of passengers transport of passengers by different modes let's look at this one you have transport of passengers by different modes with or without a company belonging by accompanied belongings by air embarking from or terminating in an airport located in the state of arunachal pradesh assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland sikkim or tripura or at bagdogra located in west bengal second non air conditioned contract carriage other than radio taxi for transportation of passengers excluding tourism conducted tour charter or hire or ropeway cable car or aerial tramway now this ropeway cable car or aerial tram tramway has been omitted from the exemption with effect from 1st april 2016 so these services are now liable to service tax so first is transport of passengers by air that is embarking from or terminating in an airport located in the state of northeast arunachal pradesh assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland sikkim or tripura or at bagdogra located in west bengal second is non air conditioned contract carriage conditioned contract carriage other than radio taxi for transportation of passengers excluding tourism conducted tour charter or hire or 
and third is here is the amendment actually omitted not amended earlier it was ropeway cable car or aerial tramway aerial tramway now this has been omitted with the fact from 1st april 2016 so these services services of ropeway cable car or aerial tramway are not are now liable to service tax that was about the exemption coming to the abatement in this an abatement of 70% has been provided in respect of transportation of passengers with or without accompanied belongings by rail now for this condition to be fulfilled earlier was sanvet credit on input and capital goods and input services used for providing taxable services has not been taken under the provisions of ccr 2004 now after amendment the word input services has been omitted input services this has been omitted which means that the sanvet credit of input services can now be taken after the amendment thus after amendment the same level of ab uh, abatement is available with sanvet credit of input service for the said service that was about your section 66d entry number o coming to the next entry which has the amendment in it this is section 66d entry number p that is service of transportation of goods transportation of goods in this entry there are amendments in the abatements only now abatement provided in respect of transportation of goods these are as follows we we'll look at it new abatements have been provided okay all right so if the mode of transport and here you have the percentage of amount charged by the service provider for providing taxable service that is exempt so under this first is transport of goods by rail other than service specified in entry number 2a that is the next entry so first is entry number 2 transport of goods by rail the exemption in this case is 70% and condition to be fulfilled is sanvet credit of input and capital goods used for providing taxable service has not been taken now prior to amendment it was input capital goods and input services the input service has been omitted from here thus now sanvet credit of input services shall be eligible this is entry 2a this is newly inserted transport of goods in containers by rail by any person other than indian railways this is transport of goods in containers by rail by any person other than indian railway the exemption is 60% and the condition is sanvet 
credit on input and capital goods has not been taken. Now prior to this insertion of entry 2A, this was covered in entry number 2. So an abatement of 70% was available earlier on the condition of non availment of credit on inputs, input services and capital goods. Now amendment is restricted to 60% with Senvet credit benefit on input services in respect of transport of goods in containers by rail by any person other than the Indian Railways. Next is entry number 10. Under entry number 10 you have is transport of goods in a vessel. goods in a vessel. The exemption is 70% and the condition is Sanvet credit on inputs and capital goods has not been taken. So Sanvet credit of input services shall be eligible. So you have the Sanvet credit of input services is eligible and Sanvet credit of capital goods as well as inputs is not eligible. Next is entry 7. This is services of goods transport agency in relation to transportation of goods other than used household goods. The exemption is 70 percent. Services of goods transport agency in relation to transportation of goods other than used household goods other than used household goods in this case the exemption is 70% Send with credit on inputs, capital goods and input services has not been taken by service provider under the provisions of Send with credit rules 2004. So in this case, the Send with credit on inputs, capital goods as well as input services is not eligible. Next entry is entry number 7A. Entry 7A. In this entry, services of goods transport agency in relation to transportation of household goods. Entry 7 was about other than household goods. In the entry 7A, what is covered is transportation of household goods. Services of goods transport agency in relation to transportation of used household goods the exemption in this case is 60 percent and the condition to be fulfilled is sandwich credit on inputs capital goods and input services has not been taken by the service provider under the provisions of sandwich credit rules that is input capital goods and input services it is not eligible that was about this entry a lot of amendments next and the last one you have is section 66 do d entry number q it is regarding the funeral burial or crematorium services again no amendment in this entry so that was about your amendment lecture on the negative services. I hope you enjoyed learning it. Thank you.